Jason from Sugar Tree Farms donated both these bikes and then dared us to ride them back to Tampa. But it's me and you versus the world, kid. And it's our big world. <laughs> you okay? Were you about to pass out? No! Once again, the harsh light of day burns away the evil spirits of the dark, cold night. And, uh, you know. Pause <laughs> in the background. Dark man sees. <laughs> we didn't have our cameras on. It was pitch black anyway, but we managed to do our best Pee Wee Herman impression. We dominoed the bikes and I broke my windshield off. But this is why you always carry duct tape. So I'll tell you this windshield was completely broken off and this is the only bolt holding it in. This is a uh, Gorilla brand duct tape. And if you buy, I literally, I've never gone on a road trip on a motorcycle and not used it. Pay the extra money for Gorilla brand duct tape. It's worth it. Windshield is, well, I mean, I don't know. We'll see if it holds or not. <laughs> they take a licking and they keep on ticking, baby. Oh, got my freshly duct taped windshield. Got some new sheepskin on here. So, cause the old ones, I tell you, they, I mean, they charge so much for the ones that are fitted to your seat, but they're so, to me, they're, they're disposable items. I mean, that's why I bought two. They're huge. They were 30 bucks a piece from Amazon, 2000 miles into the trip through the first ones where I actually kept them back here in case these get rained on then cut the next one in half. And bam, we got new sheepskin again. That's what caused the fall over yesterday. The tip over the domino, the bikes, man is, oh, man, I love these silver wings, but they're, the, or CX 500 in general their kickstands are freaking whack dude if you don't put it down exactly right it's not like the kickstand will fold back up the entire bike will flip over the kickstand and fall over especially if you have it loaded down attempt two to get to rocky mountain national forest so far the rockies have uh, been slightly vexing to us but i don't know man after last night What's the worst that could happen? We got lost, the bikes fell over. I don't see how anything else bad could happen at all. Uh, uh oh. Oh no. Got time to hit reserve. <laughs> I swear to God, I didn't plan that. Come on. There we go, baby. All right, back in action. <laughs> Does the reserve on a CX650 have 20 miles in it? I guess we're about to find out. Okay, now that the reserve is on and hopefully has 20 miles worth of gas in it, I don't see what could possibly go wrong. What's the worst that could happen? We've gotten it all out of the way. Nine more miles. I'm at 170 miles on this tank. Fingers crossed. I only ever got about 150 out of the GL500. I gotta be running on fumes though. Shay she just uh, fell behind, then came back and gave me the thumbs up. I think she officially just hit reserve, <laughs> and she was getting about 10 miles better a gallon than me. Five and a half miles. If we make it, it's going to be tight. Made it, baby. I'll never learn my lesson. Well, our early start has turned into a 10 a.m. start, which I guess is still earlier than the crack of noon. A gas stop, a trip to Wally World, and some GoPro troubles turned our awesome 8 a.m. let's get out and ride to uh, 10.35, and we're finally off the highway. But once again, baby, when this is your view, what do I have to complain about? Damn, dude, that didn't take long. We were just on that highway. <laughs> Damn, ain't this nice. Talking about having a beautiful road all to yourself? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. No, I ain't gonna complain about this one bit. Damn, what are those rocks? That's gotta be natural. Those rocks look like they're lined up to be a sign up there or something on the top of that mountain. It's bizarre. Wow, Mother Nature be doing some weird stuff with the earth, don't she? It looks like a 
such a weird, like this sandy stuff with that rock like sandwich in between it. <laughs> How bizarre, man. Why is that like the only part of that, these hills that like juts out? It's just that little tiny bit in the middle there that just is like this weird ring around them. Someone who was good at geometry would probably know what it was, but I got no idea. You just gotta look at that and wonder how that happens, man. What happened to leave that just, that little spine of rock up there at the top, like jutting out like that, like, like you're about to see freaking Rafiki holding up Simba off the end of that thing. Like, how does that happen over the years and it just leaves that one little spot? Damn, dude. Colorado it really is where it's at, man. Dude, what a beautiful state, man. Beautiful riding, beautiful scenery, everything from desert to forest to lakes. <laughs> it's my first time in Colorado, so, you know, it's definitely like my first blush, my first love, you know, when, you, when you've, you've never been somewhere before, you're so excited about it. But so far, Besides last night kind of sucking for a bunch of different reasons that wasn't Colorado's fault. This state is amazing. We definitely ain't the only ones out here enjoying these roads. I don't know why, just like whenever I'm on a road like this and I see that I didn't know about, you know, I'm just taking the directions that my phone told me to go to Rocky Mountain National Park. Now I'll usually try to pick the road that looks the curviest on the map, but it always makes me so happy when I just pick the road, like from the pier, end up going on it and see other motorcycles on it. So I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, this is this is the right road. Uh oh, pretty lot of crap on this road. Hopefully it doesn't turn into dirt. Fingers crossed. Cl climbing these kind of grades on this bike and the gravel, not exactly what I was wanting to do today. It is a pavement. It's pavement. It's just got this crap all over the top of it. You know what? You gotta risk it for the biscuit, baby. I guess the the, the places that lead you to the best views ain't exactly always the best roads. Oh, yep. Now we're gone to. I don't know. We're not on pavement anymore. Sorry, Shay. <laughs> the view, though. The view. Oh man. We're not even in the national park yet either. <laughs> Well, like we always say, as it starts to get rougher, any bike's an adventure bike. You just gotta take it on an adventure, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and say, look around and say, this was worth the dirt road. Shay was really stressed out about gravel and dirt roads at the beginning of this trip, but something tells me after the amount she's done by the time, by the time this cross country trip is over, I think she'll be doing a lot better on them. I really think that, uh, you know, her dirt bike skills, the fact that she's been on a dirt bike, really saved her ass, especially in New Mexico where we just had like out of nowhere miles and miles of deep pea gravel. I say even I was all sketched out, my front end was washing out all over the place, so she was a trooper on that one. Still this weird dirt road looks like we got a, wait it's not really dirt, like there's like some kind of pavement underneath it, which is almost worse because now you just have like gravel scattered on top of really old uh, asphalt or something like that, which makes it like so much slippier. Okay, well, I shouldn't have complained. Now we're going to just straight dirt road. Okay, wait, back to gravel. I, this, this is a weird road. So far though, I'll tell you, the mighty silver wings have handled every single thing that we've asked them to do, even off-roading. The conditions are deteriorating. Oh, that's why. They're semi trucks. So, it's like straight up washboard right now. There's semi trucks using this road. That does not surprise me at all. <laughs> oh, I wonder how much worse it's going to get. I mean, right now, this is handleable, I guess. I hope my duct tape on my windshield holds up. <laughs> Oh, she, at least she's probably not very happy, but she's doing it. 
So the dangerous part here is just, like you see there on the side, if I was riding that gravel to my right, I would probably just wash out immediately. Just wallowy suspension, street tires, overloaded motorcycle. Not great conditions to hit a patch, a really big patch of loose gravel, and I'd be expecting it. But that's the real danger, is just like a, 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 a big patch of gravel that's washed out into the main part of the road that you hit and lose the front end on. Come on, man. That and these are 40 plus year old motorcycles going over washboard roads. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, 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 not exactly the suspension you would pick. Okay, come on. This is ridiculous. At least he's hanging tough back there, but it is. The conditions are deteriorating. <laughs> the road is getting worse. Oh, maybe we'll see a bighorn sheep. That would cheer her up. It's nothing like a cute animal to take your mind off the intimate destruction of the motorcycle because of the dirt road. Judging from uh, what I see over there, we got a ways to go. <laughs> it goes all the way around that mountain up there. Hang with me, kiddo. Going down ain't so bad, but if we start going up again, yeah, as soon as you start going up again, those washboards start right back up. Holy mackerel, dude. This is getting this is getting pretty wild. You know what? Shay Lisi back there, as I, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Hurricane, sight unseen, flying across the country, 24 hours notice, hopping on a motorcycle that's almost two decades older than she is, riding at cross country, and now like on dirt roads, 116 degree weather, freaking washboard everywhere, loaded up, far from home, no cell signal. Don't, Shay Lisi's kind of a badass. You cannot take that away from her. Come on with this washboard. Give me a freaking break here. I don't know if this is exactly what Honda had in mind when they built the Silverwing, but it's handling it. This definitely isn't what I would call technical terrain. It's still just a road that you could, you know, ride any motorcycle down. But when you've got with my 315 pound ass and all of our luggage on this motorcycle right now, and a suspension that's as old as I am, uh, not exactly what you'd want. We'll call it less than ideal, but so far up to the task. And every time I think it's starting to even out, not be shitty anymore, go right back into it. Honestly, more worried about my windshield fix than anything else. But so far, man, I told you guys, Gorilla Tape, that's where it's at. Gorgeous. Worth it, baby. Worth it. Oh, is that pavement I spy up there? <laughs> Our salvation. Yes. <laughs> Made it, baby. Pavement. And let us gaze in wonder upon the beauty of our reward. Ah, curses! I spoke too soon. Right back to the, right back to the dirt. Oh man, I've been concentrating so much on keeping this thing uh, with the ugly side up, uh, ugly being me. Uh, I've been so concentrated on that. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to where we are, and now looking around with no cell reception. Uh, I believe the term is nowhere. We are in uh, nowhere, Colorado. Holy crap, man, we're we're in the sticks, baby. You know, it's crazy when it's like besides this road and like a weird little fence that looks hundreds of years old up there, there is like no sign of human beings out here. That just like keeps going back and forth from gravel. I saw a lot of this on the MADBR and I would not be surprised if this road is part of the Trans, uh, Trans American Trail because a lot of the roads when I was doing my, my very first dirtster trip uh, they were like this, where it's just kind of like 
couldn't make up its mind. It kept switching back and forth between this like gravel hard pack and like small sections that were paved. Damn, you wanna talk about being alone? You are freaking alone out here. Well, oh, oh, never mind. I just said that. There's a guy. <laughs> One guy. Damn. Dirt roads or not, Colorado is something else, baby. I cannot wait to come back here. Well, yeah, not that I'm hating. I'm loving it. Trust me. And I love doing stuff on, uh, I love using the wrong tool for the right job, but Man, I can't wait to come back here with either uh, my Sportster, my dual Sportster, or uh, or my dirt bike. That would be amazing. I think we're coming to the end of it. I think we made it, baby! <laughs> I'll never learn my lesson. And it's not like the universe isn't constantly trying to teach me a lesson. Like, it's always throwing shit my way to try to teach me a lesson. I'm just too stupid and it doesn't stick. Reckless optimism. Let's get him. Back in action. Never a doubt in my mind. And Shaylisi's right behind me, hanging tough. Okay, now I feel pretty confident saying that we're gonna be on a paved road for a while. Of course, I've said that before, so we'll see what happens. <sighs> <laughs> all of a sudden, once again, all worth it. It's crazy when the road, the road leading up to the Rocky Mountain National Forest is blowing me away already. the park at? I thought it was supposed to be up high. Then I was like, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Holy crap. There it is. <laughs> those mountains look, uh, those mountains look pretty tall over there. Gonna go ahead and say. <laughs> Random tacos in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Turned out to be pretty damn good. It's a freaking gold wing party in this parking lot. We got brand new ones, some of the old GLs, and of course the redheaded stepchilds here, the silver wings, baby. What's up, boss? Oh, you look familiar. Are you on uh, YouTube or like that? <laughs> yeah, man, Josh. Shay Tree Surgeon on YouTube. Shay Tree Surgeon? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, I got a picture with you? Oh, fuck, I'm so that's my niece. No shit, my wife saw the, we were just talking about all the gold wings coming up. We were like, oh, how cool is that? Dude, we got these in freaking Portland, man. We're on our way back to Tampa now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Cause we're, we're heading home now, but I always like, I like meeting people on the road, you know? They go in there, 153,000. 153,000 miles? That's what's up, man. Yeah, that thing's looking good for 150,000 miles, man. Nice meeting you, man. You guys ride safe, all right? Well, that was cool, man. That was really cool. I just, we just, Shay Lee's are just going like, look at this gold wing party, dude. Like, you're getting five, six gold wings all pulled up. Three of them together, two of them were uh, by themselves, and then the guy came up. I, I actually walked over and asked him how the weather was up in the National Park. He walked over and goes, man, you look real familiar. <laughs> I swear I've seen an asshole like you on the internet. That's so cool, man. Like I always say, people are like, oh man, you got fans. It ain't fans, I don't like to say that. This sounds so freaking corny, but I promise you, I mean it. No fans. <laughs> Every time I meet someone on the road, it's just a friend I haven't met yet. That's really how I look at it. Rocky Mountain National Park. Pretty stoked, I'm not gonna lie to you. <sighs> Rocky Mountain National Park, million dollar highway. Uh, today's shaping up a lot, but I mean, I guess the 20 miles of dirt roads was kind of a pain, but I still had fun. You know, it's a, being able to tell the story afterwards. That's, that's the fun part, you know? You gotta embrace the suck if you want to be able to brag afterwards. And I'm just kidding, it was fun. I even talked to Shay Lisi and she actually was like, yeah, no problem. Gravel roads, no problem now. So sad to see everything burned down in this beginning part by the fires, but from what I understand, and trust me, there's a lot I don't understand, that wildfires that run through parts like this, like it's actually, it's they're supposed to happen. It's a part of the whole uh, ecosystem, something like that. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I feel like I read that somewhere, like they have to happen at certain times, or maybe they, I know that sometimes people do like controlled burns, I don't know if this was a controlled burn or not, but seeing as the whole thing ain't burnt down, they controlled it at some point, right? 
Hell yeah. Out here riding this Corvette through Rocky Mountain National Forest. I can dig it. Oh, the temperature is already dropping. I feel like we've barely gone up at all. I got a feeling my ass gonna be shivering before the end of this one. Oh, here come them switchbacks. We're definitely climbing now. Damn. God, you look how fucking high up we've come already. I and mean, it's not like we we're low. At a low sea level when we were back in that valley. <laughs> Still going up. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was high, but it's like looking down into the valley between these trees and seeing where we were as opposed to where we are and no signs of uh, slowing down on the upward momentum. We're getting really high. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to the top of the world's tallest roller coaster over here. Damn, another switchback. How much higher can we go? I have no idea what our altitude is. You are ele elevation. Usually there's signs in most of the other places I've been, but I haven't seen one yet. I right, so leaving it leaving it as a surprise for the very top. Well, I'm our, I'm loving it already. Uh, Shay just assured me we just pulled over because she's been here a couple times and she goes, uh, that's the most boring part of the park. Don't you worry. Damn, we're two miles above sea level. Holy mackerel, I just saw the sign. Oh, I'm a Florida boy. I'm used to being at sea level. As in, I can hit the bay and be hitting salt water with a rock if I throw it hard enough. Oh, man. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. Just rode past the Continental Divide. Does that mean that's the middle of the continent? I don't know. Maybe that means we're halfway home finally. <laughs> I thought I thought we were about halfway home. Colorado's about midway in the between Portland and Tampa, but if we're just across the Continental Divide, that's really the halfway point, right? I don't know. Again, like I said, I failed geometry in high school, so someone will have to answer that question in the comments down below who knows a little bit more about it. Two miles above sea level, you can definitely tell a distinct lack of power, but I will tell you, these GL650s, Honda, I, I think if you're asking me, and I've spent quite a bit of time with both motors, the 500 and the 650, if you ask me, they took everything that I disliked about the 500, which is just the fact that it's kind of boring, doesn't make enough power. Other than that, I love the motor. It's just reliable as a stone. And they just fix everything because I've never once felt like I didn't have enough power. You know, sometimes you got a downshift. They fix the gearing because on the 500, the gearing, like you just scream at 80 miles an hour. You're doing like over 85, 9,500 RPM or something like that. So the, the gearing on the final gear is different. It's got so much more character, so much more power. It just feels nice and punchy and great. Like, that sucks that this was the last year. Like, I can't believe they did. They made the 500, the CX-500 for all those years, and then they made the 650 for just one year and stopped because this is a miles better bike than the 500. Ooh, that was a lot of words for two miles above sea level. I feel like I just like I just took a, drank about freaking two pitchers of beer right now. Holy mackerel. Would you look at that? Holy crap, we're above the clouds! Is that clouds over there? Dude, I can see we're looking down at clouds! I have never done that before! Holy mackerel! That is so freaking cool! Holy mackerel! That looks like motorcycle parking to me. <laughs> hey, Shay. Yeah. Would you say that you're higher than you've ever been? <laughs> Ooh, I like the sound of that. Mountains of Madness. Chaos Mountain. Uh, they closed it down. Too much chaos? President screwed. I think we I think we got uh French vanilla instead of Oh, buddy.
buddy. You know, my you, my big mouth and my big imagination want, want, wanted to see what's on the other side of the mountain. I climbed all the way to the top of that thing. And I was like a fish out of water at the top. That was rough. I am feeling it now. 650 or not, it's still hauling my fat ass up this hill at freaking 12,000 feet. So I'd say it's doing all right. You know, finally calming down after walking to the top of that little hill so I could get my view. And I got to tell you guys, it makes me very, very grateful for the internal combustion engine. Because <laughs> like, holy mackerel, man, now all I can imagine, because I've never been up this high or really done, that is the most physical activity I've ever done this high. And now I'm appreciating what it would mean to walk up this or bicycle up this. And I see people all over the place here running, bicycling, hiking. And uh, I just got to tell you, you guys are freaking mutants. Oh my god, I could not not get this one. Oh, the guy just opened us up the awesome spot right here. Oh, what? This is the coolest place I have ever been on a motorcycle. Holy man. Well, you know, besides that one girl's house that did that one thing I liked. But, uh, okay, this is the second coolest place I've ever been on a motorcycle. <sighs> Top of the world, baby. <laughs> Top of the world with Shay Lisi right there. Oh, my God, this feels good. <laughs> baby. Oh, this is it. This is fucking it. Wow. Oh my god. Shay was right. She was like, oh, it doesn't get good till later. She was right. Wow. Oh my god. I could shed a freaking tear, man. It literally makes me want to cry. It's so beautiful. What mean, petty, short sighted things we are. We don't deserve this. We're small-minded. We scrape and scrabble and fight. And then all this just slowly, slowly moves around us at a speed that's incomprehensible. <laughs> it's incomprehensible to our petty, jealous little minds. Mine too. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about that being like. I'm not saying I don't have a petty, scrabbling, jealous little mind. I do. I absolutely do. I cannot comprehend the vastness of time, earth, <laughs> and force all at play in front of me right now. Wow, man. If you ever told me when I was a teenager, let me tell you something right now. When I was a teenager, I only wanted a couple things. I wanted myself a fast motorcycle and a hot stripper girlfriend. Well, let me tell you something right now. You better be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. <laughs> and if you ever told 16 year old me that one day I'd be on a slow motorcycle <laughs> at the top of a mountain and be loving it. Oh man, I might have asked you what the stripper's name was going to be. <laughs> such, such is the wisdom of years and uh, I'll say uh, relative wisdom. Okay, relative wisdom. I'm not, I am not a wise person. I'm dumb as a box of hammers. But uh, when I was 16, I wouldn't have given one single fuck about any of this. <laughs> oh, is that the guy we met? Dude, it is. <laughs> well, fancy meeting you here. <laughs> Howdy. Good seeing you again, brother. It's weird it says no parking. Because we're parked here, aren't we? <laughs> Thank you.
don't know why they say no parking here. This is like an awesome place to stop and take a picture. Stupid. You guys take it easy, all right? Ride safe. Back to Texas. I will, man. I appreciate the tip, brother. Pretty sure I could spend just about all freaking day here. But we got to get to Denver. Well, I mean, we don't have to. We ain't got to do nothing. We ain't got to do nothing but sit around and wait to die. But we're going to go to Denver. Oh, man. We're going to get to drive through it. That's so freaking cool, dude. It looks super natural the way it's just coming up the road like that. The mist. Not the mist. The mists of madness. Ah, uh, men enter the mist and they leave it changed somehow. Different somehow. All right, boys. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, I know I'm missing views because of the mist, but like, damn, how cool is it that we got to ride through this? This is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Zero visibility. You'll never show up on the GoPro. The GoPro always actually sees clearer than your eyes do. No visibility, no guardrail, sheer drop-offs on either side. Oh, pretty sketchy, but baby, I love it. How could you not feel alive? Can't see nothing. Death on either side of you on an old piece of crap bike. You meet the worst people on a Honda. Oh yeah. Ooh, it's thick now. It's so thick, there's just like condensation building up everything. I can see my breath now. I am freezing, but this is still very, very cool. Ah, so I some people will probably be weirded out by it or pissed they hadn't have a view, but we we got the views. I'm sure there's amazing views here too, but like what an experience to ride through this like crazy zero visibility mist through the mountains like this. Like I don't know, man. I think it's so cool. Like that, there's nothing on the other side of that. That's just a drop off. <laughs> I love it. This is so freaking cool. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> ah, I should probably use both hands. has to have dropped by like 15, 20 degrees. Has got to be in the 40s right now. This is crazy. Poor Shaylisi is probably shivering. She, as I said earlier, well, in another video anyway, when it was uh, 116 degrees out, uh, she, her brain tumor prevents her from regulating her body temperature properly. So uh, extreme hot, extreme cold, it always messes with her, but she still does it. Well, I don't know if the mist is just so thick that I'm getting wet or if it is actually starting to rain. <laughs> well, well, either way, I'm wet, so I guess it doesn't really matter. We gotta put on some gear and probably take off the GoPros. I don't know if it's gonna be raining later or what. I guess, do I, I still don't have any bars, so I have no idea. I don't wanna ice our GoPros this far away from home. Well, not pictured. <laughs> 80 miles in the rain, zero visibility, down twisting mountain roads all the way down here into Denver. Needless to say, it was, what's the word we'll call it? We'll call it exhilarating. Shay Lisi might have a couple of different words for it, but you know what? Handled it like a freaking champion. <laughs> hey, no one can take that away from you. Nothing like not knowing if you're gonna go off a cliff or into the cliff. <laughs> or into a car. Yeah. Life's most exciting when you don't know what's gonna happen. The unexpected is just, it's just the salt on life. And we like things uh, extra salty around here. Onward. It's about 46 degrees here in Denver. 
<laughs> the geese are honking and it's time to hit the road. There's a couple different reasons that we <laughs> rode through Colorado and specifically stopped in Denver. Use it a little bit earlier in this video as if you guys have watched my other cross country trips, you've seen me use this stuff there too. Me and Shay Lisi and uh, another friend of mine who you're gonna meet here in a minute uh, by the name of Nate, we have been working on uh, something pretty, I think pretty special. When I say special, uh, I mean special to me. All this traveling, all this cross country stuff I've been doing, there's a couple different things I've realized, things that I use all the time and that I've been kind of dissatisfied with the products that I have been using. So there's three main things. One being sunscreen, of course, and man, I, I don't like putting on sunscreen, so I'm really particular about what kind of sunscreen I use. The second one being like, and for lack of a better word, we're just gonna call, it is what it is, baby. It's chafing, it's, it's monkey butt. Everybody's seen the anti-monkey butt powder and stuff like that, but guess what? It really doesn't work, at least for me it doesn't. So I've tried everything from Vaseline to antiperspirants to deodorant to everything just to stop chafing literally on my ass when you're in the saddle for freaking 14, 15 hours a day. Like, man, it happens, dude. And there's no use in not talking about it or not being like, oh, well, you know, my ass doesn't hurt. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so chafing would be another one. So some kind of anti-chafe balm or ointment or tincture or whatever. And then a pain cream, uh, mainly for, I've got bad sciatic problems. And after a really long time in the saddle, it's not that I can't do it. It's that the pain in my back and then also my knuckles. I've got arthritis in the knuckles of my throttle hand. And it's not like I can't do it, but sometimes it just hurts enough that I'm like, God damn, it just like kind of sucks some of the enjoyment out of riding. So I use a, a I've been using pain cream specifically. Uh, I've been used something called BioFreeze. Icy Hot makes one too, but I really wasn't crazy about it. And I'm just using that for my knuckles and the sciatic on my back. And I've been approached by all sorts of companies. I know Shea has too, selling all sorts of happy balls and freaking all this kind of cr gross marketing where they've got all these packages with like anthropomorphic nut sacks on the outside. And I'll be honest, I'm not, I don't, I've used a couple of the products. I don't really like them. It's not my thing. So what do you do? You know, and some of these guys, they offer to pay us. We could literally just slap our name on it and say, hey, uh, Shade Tree, Shade Tree Surgeon, Shay Lisi, Cross Coat Country Adventurers. And this is, this is the pain cream we use and this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I'm not, you guys know me. I'm not going to freaking promote something unless I'm absolutely sure, sure of it. I'm a hundred percent sure that this is the fucking deal. Well, guess what? I haven't found anything that I really love. Like I can't really tell anybody, okay, I love this because I haven't really been satisfied with anything. So basically uh, there was one option left, which is make our own. So uh, me and Shay Lisi did that with my friend Nate who works in this business and we said we want to make our own formula. We want to make our own stuff. We want to make our own sunscreen. We're going to make our make our own pain cream and we're going to make our own anti-chafe stuff, anti-chafe balm tincture, whatever you want to fucking call it because I'm just not satisfied with anything you can buy either online or over the counter. And if I'm not satisfied with it, I'm certainly not going to talk to you guys and say you guys should use this because let me tell you, when I'm not satisfied, with something, y'all gonna know it. Outside of the adventure of doing it, which I love, and the bikes for Forgotten Angels and making the videos, part of the reason I, that I'm so excited that now Shay Lisi is getting to do a cross-country adventure is that she's over here testing all this stuff with me as well. So we've been through several different formulas for each, each one now, because I've been through several that I'm also not satisfied with, but we're pretty much there. I'm not quite sure about the, uh, the chafe stuff yet, because I'm not 100% yes this is the best stuff I've ever used yet and I'm not gonna put my name on it until I until it's the best and I know it's the best the pain cream we got that one down we've been through a few different formulas on that one of the big problems I had with biofreeze is that it's like bright fucking green I'm like why why the hell do you need to put a weird dye in this I don't know especially when you're rubbing it into your skin and stuff I'm just like man I don't know I feel like this doesn't need to be colored bright green to make you think it cools you off or something like that and but then there's also had a bunch of other problems with it as well we're pretty close on the sunscreen too that's more just me being a whiner about the sunscreen because i oh my god it's just like the greasy feeling after you put sunscreen on that drives me nuts like i said i ain't putting my name on anything unless i know where it was made like all this other stuff who knows what kind of weird ass factory they're making it in i don't freaking know that's for sure but i want to know where this stuff is made and where it's packaged 
bitch. You know what? I want it to be in the United States. Like, I'm sorry. Like, what what the hell, man? We've been sitting here going cross country, taking these the great American adventure here, and what I'm gonna do? Be like, yeah, buy this freaking pain cream that's made in freaking Taiwan. Like, nothing against the Taiwanese people. I would love to visit Thai. I would love to go visit there. But like, if I'm gonna be like, hey, use this for your for your iron butt challenges here in America for your cross country American adventures. You know what? It ought to be made in America. So all all of my factors for wanting to be like this is the this is the product I'll recommend are pretty freaking high. So again, like I said, the only option it left us with is to make it ourselves. And luckily, Nate, that's what he does. And this isn't somebody I met through YouTube. I went to high school with Nate. Like I've known Nate for over 20 years. So this isn't even like some sort of like, oh hell yeah. I found your YouTube channel. Let's make this thing. Like, no, man. I I know Nate we're very, very well, I promise you. So we're here in Denver because, again, I'm not going to ask anybody to use something, a product that you either eat or put on your skin, put in your body without taking a camera to where it's being made and pointing the camera at everything and going, look, here it is. Here's where it's made. No bullshit. No lies. No fancy marketing. There it is, right here. We're standing right next to where it's being made. So we're on our we're on our way there right now. And out of everything, I think it's really the pain cream that I couldn't live without. Like I said, I use it on my knuckles, probably during a day of riding. I'll use it twice on my knuckles, my back, and honestly, I'll use it on my neck too. A few days on the road is fine, but after more than three days on the road, honestly, my neck starts to hurt just from holding my helmet up. So just like put a little bit of it on the back of my neck, literally in the morning, and it really keeps it keeps the pain away pretty much all day. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's a... Uh, damn it. And I just went the wrong way. Is anybody selling something to make you a little bit smarter? <laughs> Can we make that? Or am I just going to continue to go the wrong way the entire time? Anyway. <laughs> Like I was saying, just a little bit on the back of my neck in the morning keeps the pain away pretty much all day. You know, not to share too much personal information here, but I've had issues with taking too much ibuprofen and uh, I ended up getting an ulcer from it. So keeping away from stuff like pain pills for my knuckles, my back, keeping away from stuff that I put like in my stomach and using topical stuff has been a real lifesaver for me. Like I was saying to you guys earlier, so I'm up here with uh, my buddy Nate. And like I said, this isn't some kind of YouTube thing where I got like a cold call email and trust me I'm not trying to sound cool here I wanted to accept 16 different rub this ball cream on your body it makes you feel better sponsorships I could there's a reason I haven't is because I'm not gonna ask anybody who's gonna spend their hard-earned money on a, on a product that I'm saying is good we're not gonna do that unless it's an actual good product unless I can see it being made with my own eyes well we're here with Nate who I went to high school with who's probably got stories to share about me that I would not want anybody else hearing <laughs> literally where it's made this is where uh, they've been making the different formulas where they've been going through all this stuff where they put it in the bottle this isn't like made in some random weird factory somewhere where uh, you've got people who who are unclean conditions you've got uh, people who don't know what they're making you we're talking about something that's made by real people He's bringing out a new kitchen yeah he literally brand new kitchen aid that's a big flex Nate <laughs> I also want to say they could use any mixers, but they have chosen to use, Nate is choosing KitchenAid quality. There you go. When you're talking about quality and you're talking about something you care about, you spend the money on the right thing. So yeah, I just pulled a brand new KitchenAid and if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's like a $600 blender, by the way. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I swear, I swear Nate uh, is from Tampa. I know he's from Tampa. Uh, but you definitely look like you live in Colorado now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dank Light is his, is his personal brand, by the way. I'll have that link down below if you want to order some stuff from them. I will tell you, uh, the only thing he's missing to be pure Colorado right now is like a broken guitar on his back. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. 5,000 stickers about what all the trails you've done. Well, I'm going to tell you, man, this is why, and again, I'm not trying to be like, oh, we're so much better and everyone else sucks. But here's the deal, man. Again, I'm not going to ask someone to use something on their body. This isn't even something you wear. This is something you're actually going to use on your body. Unless I can sit here and I know exactly what's going in it. I know exactly how it's made. And it's made by somebody I freaking know. I'm just saying, y'all. Uh, just beware from a lot of these places that will just slap their name on anything and say like Mr. Happy Balls fucking itch itch cream. Yeah, go ahead and stick this right up your asshole. Yeah, it's the best. They paid me $500 to tell you it was great. 
No, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're making something that we know exactly what in, when in it, exactly where it was made, where it was made. Yes, we're in America, <laughs> by the way. I'm gonna ask you to put something on your body <laughs> that's not floating. Yeah, it better, I better know exactly where it's made. Good hanging out with Nate and uh, good seeing uh, where all the stuff is made, how it's made, everything like that. Like I said, I'm not gonna, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just important to me. Again, nothing against anybody's product who isn't made in the United States and maybe they don't see, I, I don't know. It's important to me that it's made in America and I know where it's made and I've seen it been made and I know what's in it and I know exactly what's going on and we're close. I mean, I don't know when this video is coming out, but we might we might actually have it ready by the time before we even get home from this trip. But we'll see how they go. In the meantime though, got over 2,000 miles to go and it's about 45 degrees out. <laughs> Shay Lisi back there is in for a hell of a character building experience. Let's rock and roll. Get the hell out of Denver. All right, so we're in Texas. Unexpectedly in Texas, we ended up having to take a detour yesterday because what is not pictured in my video because my GoPro died and is pictured in Shay's video is 500 miles in rain and 45 degree weather also in the pitch black of night. And we ended up heading south because we thought we could get into a little bit of warmer weather. Shay was having a hard time after doing 45 degrees zero visibility and raining through the Colorado mountains. So we said, <laughs> let's head into Texas. And uh, it got all the way up to 49 in Amarillo. When I have problems regulating my body temperature, it also applies to the cold, <laughs> as well as the heat. <laughs> so yeah, that was a rough ride. I mean, it was that I thought that was a rough ride for rough me too. Roll. You'll have to get the play-by-play -play from Shay Lisi because it got filmed. Did it even happen? If uh, Shay Lisi and Shay Tree Surgeon shivered through the pitch black roads, dodging deers and potholes through Texas, Colorado, and Oklahoma, all in one night, mind you. Did it even happen? Well, dead. It's just on Shay Lisi's channel. We're gonna have to go see it there. You're in that one, kiddo. <laughs> Nobody can take it away from you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we was about to leave. We we're just checking the oil on the bikes real quick. And when lo and behold, the butcher himself, the butcher of Oklahoma, baby. My man John here walks up and goes, hey, asshole. <laughs> Are you Shade Tree Surgeon? Is that Shay Lisi? Anyway, my man John here. Good to meet you, dude. Great to meet you, Yeah, dude. thanks for coming out. Because I know you saw the bikes earlier. And you're like, I'm going to swing back by and see if that's them. Thank you for coming out. And I mean that. How cool running into John the butcher there randomly on the parking lot he said he uh I don't, i'm not sure what was going on that him and his wife were having to visit the hospital here from oklahoma but saw our bikes in the parking lot and uh after they got done to the hospital swung back by to say what's up he was like oh i don't i didn't know if i should i was like absolutely dude come on by say what's up to us man and we hung out with him for a minute i, I didn't ask what was going on at the hospital it seemed like personal business but whatever it might be i hope that it resolves itself soon and i hope that everything's all right man appreciate you john yeah, I hope you if you're I hope you're watching this right now and I hope you have an awesome day, man. That was really cool getting to shake your hand. Now it's off to discount auto parts. Uh, need a couple little things for the bike, a little bit of oil, a little bit of brake fluid. You know, these bikes are actually in really great shape. It might not look like it, but they're in amazing shape. But any bike that's 40 years old, it's gonna need a little bit of fluids before the end of a cross-country trip. Ugh, advanced auto parts. It's like the <laughs> the Dollar Tree of Auto Parts store, but they'll have one. Rolling, baby, rolling. I gotta tell you guys what Shay Lisi accomplished yesterday, riding through the mountain, well, in the last two days, <laughs> riding through twisting mountain roads with zero visibility, no guardrails, uh, riding through the night across Oklahoma, Texas, and Colorado through these long, flat plains and 45 degree weather with pouring freaking rain. That was really something else, man. Now, you know, here's the whole thing. It's like, you know, you've got all this, YouTube is what it is. A lot of times I make things seem kind of crazy and I, I mean, I try not to. I try to be honest about what I'm going through. A lot of times I even downplay it. Like on the shovelhead trip, I, <laughs> I had to downplay it. It was it was so much harder and uh, there was it was so much more crazy stuff happened than I actually put in the video because at a certain point I was just like, this doesn't seem believable. Like I'm gonna put this video out and people are gonna think I'm making this crap up. Like I had to, <laughs> I had to make it 
seemed not as crazy. And that's why I want to tell you what Shaylisi did last night. I didn't even film it. It's going to be on her channel. If I don't even know what her thoughts that she recorded on camera going for 400 miles, raining 45 degree weather through uh, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Texas. But that was a rough one. That was a rough trip. That's, a, that's one you earned. For me, you know, standing on top of that mountain in Colorado with Shaylisi there, it's like, uh, I don't know what it is, man, but when you have that victory, when you have that reward, when you're standing on top of that mountain where you're where, you're where you want to be, and the journey ain't even over yet, you've just, you've made it to the middle point, to the zenith, and you're going, man, it feels so good. And, and to me, no reward is, is worth tasting <laughs> unless you had to earn it. Like, what is a reward? How do you define victory? How do you define your reward? How do you define a good time? To me, they can only be defined by the adversity that you had to go through, the struggle that you had to go through in order to earn it. Otherwise, it's just another thing that happened to you. Really, I mean, tell me, what is the difference between just something that happened to you and an achievement? The difference is, is the struggle, man, is how hard did you have to struggle to get there? That's that's what shapes it. That's what gives it merit, in my mind anyway. That's not for everybody, but for me, uh, if I didn't have to, I mean, just risk, adversity, struggle. These are, these are the spices that we season our good times with. This is what makes them that much better. This is what takes just an event and turns it into an achievement. And without those things in there, without those dangerous roads, without no guardrails, without crazy weather, without traveling thousands of miles and rolling the dice one more time just to see where they land. Without all of that, I just would stand at the top of the mountain and kind of go, wow, pretty view, that's kind of nice. And there's no definition. There's nothing special about it to me. And that's just me, man. And that's Shay Lisi too. And for a lot of you guys out there, that's y'all, because that's why you ride a motorcycle in the first place. That's why we ride, is because you go, you, you want to turn just a, a journey into an accomplishment, and it feels good, man. It feels amazing. And for all of you out there who don't ride motorcycles who are watching, it's pretty amazing, and that's what it does for you. And, you know, that's not for everybody, but if you're missing something, if you're out there and you're and you're doing things and you're doing the things they say you're supposed to do and going to the places they say you're supposed to go to be happy and you just feel something missing, <laughs> there might be something in that caveman brain of yours, that hind brain, the part of your brain that wants a chicken wing with the bone in it because it tastes a little bit better, the part of your brain that wants the nut with the shell still on it because your little monkey brain up there, that, that nut inside just tastes a little better when you gotta peel the shell off with your fingers and the top of the mountain, Oh, it's a little bit prettier when you had to struggle to get there. I don't know where that comes from, but that's something that I got. It's something that Shaylisi got, and it's something that most people who choose to live a life on two wheels got too. And hell, man, I ain't even talking shit about you if you don't got it. You know, I'm just like, how much easier would my life be if I didn't have to just like manufacture this adversity to go through just to enjoy myself? Like, that sounds way better. <laughs> but, but if I, you know, I got to play the, the hand I'm dealt here. You know, you just got to be realistic about these things. So uh, <laughs> instead of just sitting back and enjoying the easy things that fall in my lap, oh, uh, guess what, man? We're out here tilting windmills, all right? I'll be Don Quixote till the day I die, baby. So it's the next day and me and Shaylisi are here gassing up and I'll tell you something right now. Whether you're a man of faith or not, it doesn't matter when somebody pulls up and offers say a prayer for you for safe journeys, the answer is yes. Because that's somebody who absolutely means what they're saying. Tom Johnson, it was a pleasure to make you a meet you guys. I appreciate you very much, my friend. Amen. And I mean that, I'm not just saying that for the camera. On the road, baby, with the blessings of the man Jesus himself. Wagons East! You know, I used to be the type of person who, if someone said something like that to me in a, in a gas station somewhere, if they said something along the lines of, uh, do you mind if I pray with you or can I say a prayer for you? I would have been like, nah, not me. I'm not. I would have been rude about it, I don't think, but I would have, I would have probably said no thanks. And uh, I don't know, man. Uh, time has changed me and not say, I'm not a man of faith. Uh, I believe in nothing, Lebowski. But when someone offers to say a prayer for you, you know, and they're not sitting there and they're not asking you, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart? They're not pushing nothing on you. They just genuinely just stop by and say, hey, can I say a prayer for you for your safe journey? 
why why would you tell that person no they have just come up to a stranger and it's like wishing somebody well it's like saying safe travels they're just doing it in a way that they find very meaningful that they really mean from coming from a stranger just a random stranger pulling up and seeing us on the side of the road guess what I don't know, that makes me feel pretty good. And as I've said many times before, <laughs> God loves an idiot. And when it comes to deities, I'm equal opportunity, baby. I'll take any help I can get. In the home stretch now, but we've only got a couple days left. Time is running out. I said that this trip would probably take a little less time than it actually did. And Shaylisi is running out of antidepressants. And anybody in the audience who takes antidepressants, you know that coming down off of antidepressants is as bad as coming down off a of hard drug so we have got to get her back into tampa i don't know man we got the got the blessing of the man jesus so i threw some chicken guts in the air for the great juju on the mountain i don't think anything can hold us back now let's go baby I tell you after that experience at the gas station i was so overcome by the holy spirit that me and shaylisi decided to stop and eat at chick-fil-a <laughs> make sure uh, make sure when you go to Chick-fil-A you order off the secret menu and order your chicken with extra god sauce. It's ass kicking good. Crispiness is next to godliness. <laughs> These wonder shows was brought to you by Ladies Godtastic God Sauce. Well, nothing bad ever happens in the home stretch. You know, I really wish we were gonna stop in Little Rock. And I know Shay would have loved Little Rock, but here's the thing about doing a cross-country trip. If you're gonna see everything you wanna see, and even then you're not, you'd have to probably take a couple months to do it. So what I always say is you can't see everything, so don't try to. So if you bust your hump trying to see every single freaking thing that you possibly can, I feel like you're just gonna stress yourself out and not have a great time. We saw as much as we could, and unfortunately, we're not, I'm not gonna get to show Shay Little Rock. But one day, maybe next year. It's only a couple rules for eating pickles that I follow. One, always get the spicy one. Two, always drink the juice. Ah. Three, always keep eye contact with the locals when you take your first bite. It establishes dominance, and it's a great way to make new friends. A thousand miles left. This epic journey, I mean a thousand miles is still a lot. I can't believe how do you feel? Because it's not over yet. <laughs> Poor Shaylisi. I'm going like, hey, it's only a thousand miles left. We could just do it in one shot, do an iron butt back to Tampa. And Shaylisi, uh, very politely, or actually not very not politely, uh, declined. And I don't blame her, you know, rocking out thousand mile days ain't for everybody. And while I don't have a problem doing it, uh, Shaylisi, no, I think she's still pretty proud of those uh, six, seven hundred mile days she's been doing, and I'm real proud of her too. Well, once you start to get into over a thousand mile territory, eh, you're just stubborn, stupid, or most likely a combination of the two. And that's why I like doing them. I may not be a smart man. Well, yeah, I'm not a very smart man. Let's roll, baby. Hell yeah. We are in Alabama, baby. Nothing against my folks in uh, Mississippi, uh, but we passed through Mississippi and I swear it's like someone just drew a line in the sand and said, this part of the country is beautiful and this part of the country is flat. Now I'm sure there's some beautiful roads in Mississippi, just, but from the highway, don't get me wrong, I got lots of friends who live in Mississippi, but God, man, Alabama is just some of the most beautiful country in the United States. And I can say I've been almost all over it at this point. But now West Virginia, yeah, West Virginia is probably prettier. But, Al I mean, Alabama, I feel like we want to incorporate them. Florida should just incorporate Alabama. Yeah, Oregon, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're all pretty, but they're not in the south, are they? I have explored a little bit of Alabama back roads when I was on my chopper going to Barber, but I haven't near explored as much as I want to. It, I, like I said, I've only ever seen Alabama pretty much from the interstate, but it's gorgeous from the interstate. It really want, makes me want to like get on the dirt circum and spend some time here exploring these back roads and dirt roads around Alabama. It's been a hell of a trip and we are drawn towards the end and that always leaves me feeling just a little bit melancholy. Once you get done with some grand adventure, even if it's a one day adventure you come back home and you're just like ah. there are two feelings inside me at war with each other one is looking forward to my own bed and the other one wants to keep going more than anything in the world and i don't know man one of these days i'm gonna have to let one of them win and something tells me it might be the one that wants to live on the road i've seen a couple of guys who live on the road and i don't know if i'd want to do it forever but man i wouldn't mind trying it for a couple years sure is addictive once you start rolling down these highways 
I just, I get up every day and I want to do it more. You know, the first couple days of it, I'm like, oh, my butt hurts, ooh, this hurts, that hurts. About day three or four, I'm rolling into my stride. I'm building momentum and I don't want to stop. And I'm coming up to the end. I'm like, 4,000 miles later, I can't believe it's over. <laughs> I'm like, what, 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 what do you mean it's over? I was just getting started. But that's all right. I got plenty of people I want to see in Tampa and, uh, these bikes got plenty more adventures in them, even if they're not adventures that I'm having with them. Whoever gets these bikes, I'm gonna make sure they go on some grand adventures with them. Probably the poster child for that is my man Lost on the Road 21, who run the Road King. That guy has been all over the United States on that Road King, and he posts pictures every couple days of him going on a new adventure. That's what I wanna see from anyone who wins one of these bikes. <sighs> for right now, the adventure does continue. We still got many miles to go before we lay our heads down in our own beds. Sitting here rolling on the road, I had to freaking roll through Alabama. I had to turn on my man Baker X Derek on Twitch here for a second. Baker X Derek is still making regular YouTube videos. If you watched him back in the day, he's still killing it. They're still awesome. And he's on Twitch, so great dude. I, I personally, as a YouTuber, for lack of a better word, I owe Derek a lot. He taught me a lot, gave me a lot of advice, and helped me out in some really crucial ways when I was first starting my channel out. It seems like we should be leaving more triumphantly than to the sound of people mowing grass and after staying at the crappiest, most stain-filled hotel that we've ever been at. But you know, not every journey ends with triumph. Some journeys just fizzle out and you slowly crawl your way home and wonder why you ever did it in the first place. <laughs> Probably want a journey to end with a whimper, not a bang. I had a journey end with a bang once, and that was uh, my attempted trip on my FXR. I'm gonna tell you what, having a journey end on a bang is exciting, but definitely kind of a pain in the ass. When we're telling the stories, nobody likes to tell the story about how you limped home, saddle sore, soaking wet, not wanting to sit on that motorcycle for a week. We talk about the glory, baby! The glory of adventure! because what we're doing is making memories. And when uh, you're remembering something, you might as well remember the good parts, right? There is no good without bad. <laughs> the hard times, the struggle, the adversity, that's what defines the good times in a trip. So there has to be adversity. And sometimes it's just the manufactured adversity of choosing to ride a motorcycle on a trip. Even if it's just that, that's okay. Because that's, that's the edges. That's what it takes to define a good memory. And without those, <laughs> It'd just be riding down the road, wouldn't it? Well, it's the crack of noon. Reckon we better get going. The home front is calling us, and Shaylisi's even feeling it. She's had such an experience. Not only did she get to ride across the country for the very first time on a 40-year-old motorcycle, ups and downs and cold, every single terrain you can imagine, every single weather condition you can imagine, the tops of mountains, 12,000 feet to 230 feet below sea level in Death Valley. Like, Shaylisi did it all. And one of the coolest things, and a lot of guys who watch the channel regularly know that I'm a, a huge, I'm a very avid reader. So Shaylisi didn't read a lot because unfortunately, uh, you know, just her ADD kind of prevented her from being able to process reading like words very well. So what she found out really worked for her is audiobooks. So on this whole trip, she started it at the beginning and literally has about five hours left, which is about what it'll take uh, for us to get back to Tampa of Stephen King's The Stand. Now, if you've never read The Stand, it is obviously an amazing book. And if you wanna argue on that, I'll fight you to the death. But it is such a great road trip book because she's literally, you know, as, as uh, you know, all of Randall Flagg's people are going into Las Vegas. We're crossing through Las Vegas as everyone's flocking to Mother Abigail in Boulder. We're riding through Boulder. We're riding the same roads that Trash Can Man walked on. Like the, We're just like riding all these places that are being described in the book and she's getting to listen to this amazing story of the stand while traveling across the country and they're on motorcycles in the book. I just, what an awesome, I just think what an amazing memory, an amazing way to experience that book for the first time. Listening to the entire thing on a cross country road trip on a motorcycle. And I, a lot of people are just like, I don't care why you're talking about books, but man, 
and man, we've been talking about it the whole way as everything, because I'm very, I've read the book several times, uh, so I'm very familiar with it. And we've just been talking the whole way, and she can't wait to get off the bike and tell me the next development that happened in the book that also like somehow keeps coinciding with the scenery that we're going through. So freaking cool, man. I'm so proud of Shay Lisi. What a freaking experience. And she agrees with me. We were like heading back to Tampa, and she's like, man, I just want to keep going. I don't want to stop. Like, I'm tired, my butt hurts, I'm achy, I'm full of bruises and pains, but I don't want to stop. Like, yeah, kid, me neither. Care if you're going 5,000 miles or 500 miles, the last 50 miles always sucks. In this case, the last 300 miles is uh, is pretty rough. <laughs> you can Think about all you've done before this. No. I believe in you. All right, let's knock down these last 300 miles and, and get Shay Lisi home. I think she's earned a home-cooked meal. I'll leave you guys with a piece of advice about traveling, especially if you're traveling outside of the Wang. If you're coming from there and you got to go through Georgia, don't speed, baby. It ain't worth it. There's literally some of Georgia's finest on every, every single uh, exit. Every single exit, they're out here uh, uh, collecting donations for the Police Athletic League. So... Let me tell you what, set your speedometer at five miles over when you go through Georgia and thank me later. There are plenty of places where I'll put the hammer down and do triple digits for hours at a time. Georgia ain't one of them. Oh, T minus 20 minutes till Wang re-entry. Woo, baby. You dirty hobo swamp wizard and the queen of the Florida men return to the Wang. Cross country, 4,000 miles! Shay Lisi and Shay Tree surging, oozing across the country. Raps are coming to a town near you, all right? And we're back home, back to the way, back in the swamp. I can feel that thick air, I can feel the humidity, and uh, it definitely looks like we're gonna get rained on. <laughs> we're home. Oh, here's the one cool thing about Florida. You can see that rain coming. There it is, baby. Uh, time to pull over and put on the rain gear. I think we might be able to just make that overpass before it starts pouring. Whew, and it is coming down. Whew, talk about perfect timing with this overpass. Well, like we always say, God loves an idiot. Florida wouldn't be welcoming us back. We wouldn't be back in the wang unless we got a little wet. Fingers crossed we can make it the rest of the way to Tampa dry. We're definitely gonna be dodging uh, a few raindrops and uh, rain clouds along the way, but it wouldn't be riding in Florida if you weren't doing that. Ah, oh, I can smell it. <laughs> it's uh, that pungent smell of home, nice and earthy. We're back in the swamp, baby, and it feels good. I love this country and I love the way it looks. Riding through the mountains of Colorado, the deserts of Nevada, the, the mountains and the deserts of California. Ah, there's no place like the swamp, though. This is where I belong. Well, so much for getting home dry. Looks like we got another cell in front of us. I think I'll just get wet this time. I really don't feel like putting on my rain gear again. And a rainbow just for us. Welcoming us back to Florida. <laughs> us on our queer little motorcycles. The rainbow says, welcome back to the moist embrace of the Wang. One more gas stop before we hit Tampa. And uh, if I pick the right gas station, uh, there might be a surprise here for us. Our usual escort back into Tampa. He's met us in many different places, sometimes all the way on the other side and also gone on the trip with us. But what is an entrance back into Tampa without the one, the only, the tall, dark, handsome, and mysterious David Tyler. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Once again, uh, getting out of here and meeting us up in the middle of nowhere so he can escort us back into Tampa because that's what friends are for. And I know one of the other reasons that he's here is because he's like, God damn it, I would have gone again. <laughs> and I know you, you would have gone again. I know you're gonna do that on the 31st. So that was the thing. David went three times cross country in the last six months and I had gone twice and I was like, uh-uh, motherfucker, I'm gonna wait till you're all bound up at the property. Can't go anywhere and I'm going real quick just so we can be even for the end of the year. <laughs> that's for going back into Florida first last time. <laughs> 4,000 miles across the country, Shay Lisi, mother of frogs, queen of all the Florida men, breaker of motorcycles, but not this motorcycle, baby. She made it. As everyone in the gas station staring at me, I don't care. 
That's an accomplishment that everyone should know. The home stretch with my man, David Tyler. If you didn't know David Tyler, David Tyler and Cindy Tilly, his wife, they, uh, well, not wife, yeah, they're getting married at the October Weirdo Camp Out. They run Forgotten Angels, which is one of the reasons we did this whole thing. There's a lot of different reasons, but the whole reason I met Jason from Sugar Tree Farms, the whole reason that we're in possession of these bikes right now is because he donated them to be raffled off for Forgotten Angels and then challenged us to ride them across the country because, you know, he believed in the bikes and look, here they are. <laughs> like, absolute, besides me breaking the windshield, which I'll replace, absolutely fine. The whole reason that we're doing this is for Forgotten Angels. That's the reason that I met Jason. That's the reason that all of this stuff happened. And if you guys know me and you know David, you know that that's something I'm super passionate about. So both of these bikes, along with a Hummer H1, are getting raffled off with 100%. I'm not keeping a dime. Jason's not keeping a dime. Shaylisi's not keeping a dime. David's not keeping a dime. 100% of all the money raised to raffle these two bikes off and the Hummer H1 is gonna go directly to benefit these young men who've aged out of the foster care system to give them the first chance that they've ever had. They never got a chance to start their life. Well, well, when they're in foster care and they go through abuses before they get to foster care that would make your toes curl. They're beaten, they're mentally abused, physically abused, sexually abused, and then they just get stuck in a foster home that doesn't care about them, puts them in a room with three other boys, doesn't pay any attention to them, then they turn 18 and they throw them out on the street. I wish I was making that up. It is absolutely true. Now, there are some great foster parents out there. There's also some bad ones. Unfortunately, these kids fall through the cracks. Nobody's looking out for them after they turn 18. They don't have any life skills. They don't have any responsibility. A lot of them don't have driver's license. They don't have, they don't have anything. No job, no money, no cell phone, and they're homeless. They're just out in the street going like, hey, figure it out, kid. Well, that's where David comes in. That's where Cindy comes in. That's where Forgotten Angels comes in. Forgotten Angels is a very special place. What they do is they take in these young men. They have to build their own tiny home and they have to pay for it. Now, that paying for it is a, is a nominal cost, but they have to because they have to learn the responsibility of paying their own money to own something. They have to take pride in ownership. That's, again, this is the stuff that David thinks of because these kids were never taught how to do that. They have to get a job if they don't have one. They have to get their high school diploma or go to college if they haven't. They don't have to go to college. I personally, I, college never helped much use for me, but if they want to go to college, they, David and Cindy will help them do exactly what they want to do. They have to get their driver's license. They have to learn how to ride a motorcycle. They have to get their motorcycle license. They have to learn how to drive a stick shift car. They have to, and Dave and Cindy are mom and dad. They call them mom and dad out there. And it's an absolutely amazing place. This isn't just some like, oh, let's give these kids a few thousand bucks and get them an apartment and then walk away and pat ourselves on the back and say, good job, look what look the great job we did. No, David and Cindy are raising these kids like they're their own children because they never got that. That's what your money is going towards. That's why Jason donated these two bikes. That's why me and Shay Lisi, I mean, besides also getting to ride it across the country, but that's one of the reasons we said, yes, we will ride these across the country to help raise awareness for Forgotten Angels. So that's where your money goes. And if you win a raffle ticket, if you win one of these silver wings, I will pay for your plane ticket to fly one way to Tampa and ride it back home. If you want, you don't have to do that. Also just ship it to you if you want. But if you want to take that same adventure, I'll pay for your plane ticket to come down to Tampa. I'll party with you and then send you on your way on a one way, on a one way ticket here, ride the Silver Wing home. We're gonna take them and get them fully serviced and all fixed up and cleaned up so it'll be ready for you to mess up on your adventure. Like I always say, this is gambling for a good cause. We are chaotic, good, baby. This is something you can feel good about doing. It's not about winning a bike. It's about helping those people who were left behind, helping those people whose family wasn't there for them. And there's one thing that we can understand as mo motorcyclists, as bikers, we can understand what it's like to have the family that you choose. And that's why one of the reasons we get all these young men into motorcycles and why it's been so helpful, because you're surrounded by people you choose to make your family. You get to choose who you really rely on. And motorcycles have given me everything in my life. They've given me everything. <laughs> including my best friends in the world. The whole world's dad, David Tyler over there. <laughs> so
So they've given me everything, and they get and their and motorcycles are doing so much for these young men of Forgotten Angels and our mission to expand to other states and to help these kids. Because let me tell you what, you know we raise we raise a lot of money, but if you've ever had a kid, try having 22 teenagers. It's pretty expensive. So if you wanted to, if you want to help out a little bit, buy a raffle ticket. And if you can't buy a raffle ticket, that's okay. You don't have to. You can tell somebody about it. Even the smallest bit helps. And what I always say is people go like, I don't know, the problem's too big. I don't know how to help. Well, here you go. For 25 bucks, you can help. And if you don't have 25 bucks, that's fine. You can still help. You can still tell somebody. If you just tell one person, you've done more for these kids than almost everybody has in their entire freaking life. So trust me. Your actions mean something. They mean something and they do good. So buy a raffle ticket if you can. And if you can't, tell somebody about it. But for right now, <laughs> me and Shay Lisi's asses are pretty sore. Let's head home. I gotta fart my own couch for a few days.